In this video, we will be doing a quick walkthrough through the different uh, options of the touchscreen control panel on the Vulcan FC500. On the left side of the touchscreen, we have our four orange arrow keys, which allow us to move the cutting head in the appropriate direction. Now, I can use it to move it in the X or Y direction. And um, I can also adjust the speed. So at the moment, we have a speed of one, uh, which makes it move very slow. That is for the fine adjustment. If I want to move the cutting head quickly, I press the number one and it will switch to a 10. So now it's 10 times the speed. And I can now easily move the cutting head uh, very quickly across the table of the flatbed cutter. Down below, we can see the speed and force settings for each of the tools. So for tool number one, we have the upper row. And if we want to adjust the speed, uh, we need to go into the settings. And here we can see which speed is set. If it's uh, 207 in this case for the speed, and for the tool two, it's 700 millimeters. And on the right, we can see the force for each tool. So it's 600 gram uh, for both tools at the moment. In the right part of the control panel, we have the buttons where we can access uh, the different options and different settings. So option number one uh, is where we can go into the settings. There we have different uh, possible settings. The first one is calibrate cutter size. Now I can touch that and then push enter. Uh, the calibrate cutter size is explained in the manual, so you will uh, need to insert two pens, put in a sheet of paper, and the cutter will automatically draw a rectangle. And uh, then you can measure this rectangle. And uh, here in the menu, you can see the two different values, so which uh, size has been set. And then you measure it with your ruler, which size you really have. And in case there is a difference between the actual size and the uh, desired size, you can easily put in here the measured rectangle size. And this way, the cutter will be calibrated and uh, use the right uh, settings again. So here we have three buttons. We have a draw, which is going to draw that rectangle. Then we enter the settings, click the calc button. So it will calculate the right uh, calibration values depending on the measured data. And with return, we can just go back. Next step is the offset setting. Um, here we can see the offset values, which uh, are the value between the camera and the actual cutting tool. Um, this is important to be set correctly if I want to do contour cutting. Um, so the machine will cut at the right position. In case this offset uh, is off or needs to be recalibrated, it's also very easy. We just need to insert uh, two pens, put in a sheet of paper, and click the auto button here on the control panel. And then it will automatically draw two small circles. We'll read these with a camera and then draw a rectangle um, with a square inside and uh, uh, if the if each of the lines touch each other but are not crossing each other, then the setting is correct. Click return again. Then we can go into the cutting mode setting. If I click enter here, there are three different operation modes. There's the normal mode, which is sufficient for most regular jobs. Then there's the precision mode. If you have very small jobs uh, where you need very high precision, there the speed will go down if you go to precision mode. And then you can have a high speed mode, which will increase the speed but reduce precision a little bit. In the systems information, uh, we can see different information on the machine. So we have uh, the model, we have the serial number, we have the version of the main board, so which revision it is. We have the serial number. And then what's a little bit different and not that intuitive, if you want to uh, switch to the next page, you can't really use the uh, scroll bars on the right. You basically need to flip uh, from up to down. 
So here we can see the cutting lengths. That's how, how much has actually already been cut with that machine. Uh, we can see the IP address for the network interface and the firmware version. That's basically diagnostic data uh, for technical support when necessary. By touching the home button, I get back to the main menu where we can see the different other options. The next button can adjust the speed and force. So here on the left, I can switch between the two tools, tool number one, tool number two. And then with the sliders, I can simply adjust the speed and force to the values I would like to uh, use. I can also do that in the sign cut software. Then the data from the sign cut will override the settings that are set here. Now with the test cut function, I can perform a little test cut in order to see if my uh, knife settings are set correctly. So when I push that, the machine will start a cast cut. And that's what it just did. Um, with a pause function, if there's a problem during a cut, um, I can hit the pause button in order to pause the cut. Um, an alternative uh, that's sometimes used is uh, pushing the emergency switch, but the emergency switch should actually only be used for real emergencies and if there are problems. If you just need to stop a cutting job, just press the, uh, press the pause button. In the file section, um, I can access a USB thumb drive that I can just plug into the machine. And there again, I have my list of files and I can flip through it just by flipping up and down. And uh, then I can select any PLT file that I've previously created. And uh, if I have the right print for that PLT file, I can uh, cut directly from the USB drive and don't need a computer connected to the machine. So go back to home. Then we have the recut button, which will simply do as it says, it will recut the last job that has been done. So if I have a stack of always exactly the same job, one after another, uh, once a job is finished, I just push the move to origin button. So it will go back to its origin. And then I push the recut button and uh, it starts the same job again. Also in the uh, sign cut software, I can select what's supposed to happen once a job is finished. It can either stay or go back to the origin. So I would save that one step if I uh, set go back to origin in the sign cut software. And then all I need to do is replace my material, put it in the same position, which I can easily align on the flatbed because of the markings, and then just push the recut button and it will recut the same job as it did before. Last but not least, the two buttons on the lower right are the move to origin and the origin button. So if I uh, move my cutting head to the desired origin position by pushing the origin button. It will uh, confirm that origin. So that is always my starting point. And now if after a job or later I am uh, on a different position, I'm just going to move the cutting head somewhere else. So now I'm, I am in a different position. And if I push the move to origin button, it will automatically go back to the uh, origin position. Basically, these are all functions that are available in the very simple and easy to use touchscreen panel. So um, everything else can be set in the software and uh, basically it's all that's required to control the machine.